Hello everyone. I hope you're ready to have some creative fun with me today. We're going to be making this adorable quilted pillow. It is the camper pillow and we're going to walk through the instructions of the pattern to make this pillow here in this video today. This pillow measures 20 inches wide and 13 inches tall and we are walking through the pattern today. Let's begin today and go over all of the different things that we will need to make this pillow. First, I have some tape and we're going to use that to tape together all of our template pieces and some scissors. I have a thin piece of batting here. You'll need to use a cotton batting or an 80-20 works just as well. You'll need a piece of fabric for the back of your pillow. I have a scrap piece of muslin to aid in the quilting of our pillow top. I'm going to be using some heat and bond light. You could use your favorite fusible product. And then I just have a different uh, selection of fabrics to use as the applique parts of my pillow top. So we have all of those things ready to go. Today I'm going to be using some different colors of embroidery thread to sew down my applique. And you'll need a needle and thread to sew together the opening of our pillow. So let's go ahead and begin with step number one where we are cutting all six of the batting templates and we are going to tape them together. So go ahead and gather those and we'll meet back. So let's set aside the instructions for our pattern and locate all of the batting templates. Again, there are six that we'll cut out. They are intermingled with all of the different applique pieces of this pattern. So you'll go through and set aside all of your applique pieces so they don't get lost and cut out your six batting templates directly on the line. Just like I'm doing here. Once you have all six cut out, we're ready to go ahead and tape together the template that we're going to use to cut out the shape of our pillow using our batting. So I'm just taping all of those together. I usually start with the top three and then tape together pieces four, five, and six and then just join them right in the middle. Make sure everything lines up. Tape right through the middle. And then I'm going to flip it over and tape it on the back as well. Now we have our batting template. We can pull out our piece of batting and the muslin. I'm going to go ahead and cut the muslin out at the same time as I cut the shape of our camper from the batting. So I have those two layers here. And I realize that my batting is too small. <laughs> So I have a new piece of batting and we're going to repeat this process and make two layers with the muslin on the bottom and then our batting. And now we can bring in our batting template and I'm just going to put a few pins to hold these layers together all the way around our camper. And then with a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut the batting and the muslin both at the same time to the exact shape of our camper pillow. Just carefully going all the way around. Now you'll notice this time we are using a piece of muslin. This pillow is a little bit bigger than the last pillow that we made together. And I just find that the muslin helps uh, ease everything underneath of the presser foot and the batting won't drag on the feed dogs of your machine. So just cleaning up the batting portion. A 
And then once you have everything trimmed up, you can remove the pins and remove your template. We are done with this portion for now, so we're just going to fold everything up and set it off to the side. Now we are moving on to step number two where we are going to cut out all of the different applique shapes. You'll notice that there is an optional window flower template if you'd like to add a flower in the window. We're going to begin with the largest pieces of this pattern and that would be the camper top and the camper bottom. Each one of these pieces has three stencils that we need to cut out directly on the line and tape together. So we'll go ahead and do that. So just like that, we have the camper top and the camper bottom stencils. I'm going to bring in my heat and bond light. And I'm going to go ahead and trace the outline of the camper bottom. Now one thing to keep in mind is that all of the templates in this pattern have been mirror imaged. And so you are ready to go ahead and start tracing as soon as you print out your pattern. I also like to uh, select the actual size as my printer setting when printing out this pattern. Now you'll see that this stencil piece is large and so what I'm going to do is fill in the center of this piece with some smaller applique templates. One of the reasons why I like to do that is because when you use this much fusible product, your projects tend to be a little stiff. And so we're going to remove the center of the heat and bond within this large piece and really soften up our pillow top. Another reason I love to do this is because now we are utilizing all of this valuable real estate <laughs> within this template and getting the most use out of our fusible that we can. I am going to go ahead and label each one of my pieces so that when I have a bunch of pieces off to the side, I don't get confused and accidentally fuse something in the wrong place. And I'm going to go ahead and fill up all of this section in the middle. And then I will continue tracing the camper top and all of the remaining pieces. And then we will move on. Now I am finished tracing all of my different applique templates and we can start separating all of our pieces. Now it's very important at this point to remember not to cut your templates out directly on the line. We are going to give ourselves a little bit of space beyond each one of our template pieces. We're going to start down here with the camper bottom and I'm just roughly cutting that out. And now we can remove the center portion, giving ourselves about an inch to half an inch of fusible for the camper bottom. And removing all of the inside section. Going around really carefully. And now we have the piece that we're going to use for the bottom. And then we can go through each one of the additional pieces and separate those. And I like to trim off any large sections that hang off the sides. Just like this. We'll do this for all of our pieces and meet back. Now that we have all of our template pieces cut out and separated, we're ready to bring in our fabric and start fusing all of our pieces. I like to give my fabric a quick press and make sure there's no wrinkles and it all lays nice and flat. We're going to begin with the camper bottom. Make sure that it fits onto the fabric 
and lays nice and flat. Whenever I'm fusing a large piece like this, I like to start in the center and then work my way towards the ends. Just to make sure everything fuses nice and flat. Then we can bring in our pair of scissors. And I'm going to separate this large section at the bottom and put that fabric right back into my stash. And then we can cut out our camper bottom directly on the line this time. And you can see, since we've removed all of that fusible from the center of our template, everything stays nice and soft and the fabric has a beautiful drape to it. I'm gonna repeat this process for all of my other pieces for the camper front and we'll move on. Now we are ready to move into step number three. We're going to start fusing all of our templates directly onto the batting. This is when our pillow will start looking like our camper. We're gonna start with the camper top and I'll just pull that paper backing right off of the heat and bond. And we will take this section and line it up directly along the edge of our camper up at the top and we will fuse that into place and this is why it's really important to make sure that you've used a cotton batting or an 80-20 blend because we do not want to melt any of our batting. <laughs> Next, we will bring in the bottom of our camper. Make sure that these two pieces meet directly in the middle and fuse that into place. Just like this. The next section I'm gonna bring in is the tire well, and that is going to overlap the bottom of the camper and the exposed portion of the batting at the very bottom. And since we're down here, I'm gonna go in and bring in the rest of the tire pieces. Make sure not to bring your tire down towards the edge because that will be in the seam allowance. And we will fuse these other two pieces down. And then we can move on to the windows and the door. Let's start with the bottom of the door. I'm gonna remove the paper backing. And one thing to note about the door is that it does overlap onto the camper top by just a little bit. And that is what it is supposed to do because when we add the top of the door that is going to go over top of that overlapped section by just a little bit and that's going to reduce the amount of raw edges that we have to sew when we get to that section. I'm going to fuse down the swing door and then my windows. I like to start with the back window and make sure to line that up directly with the edge of your fabric so that when we sew our pillow, that edge is caught in the seam allowance. And then just lining up the window with the back window, you can fuse that right into place. And now we have all of our curtain pieces. So I'll just go through and sort where each one of the pieces go. This is one of the reasons why I love to mark all of my template pieces <laughs> so that I don't get confused and accidentally fuse something in the wrong place. There is a little map on one of the pattern pages that shows you the placement guide for each one of these pieces if you do get confused during this process. I find that very helpful. I had to look at it a couple of times. And now we are basically decorating our pillow with all of the different applique pieces. 
and you can see it really starts taking on its own little personality at this point. For this pillow, I'm going to leave off the additional flower that goes in that center window, but you could certainly add that. And then we have all of the curtain pieces, the little tiny round half circles that go in the center of the curtains. You can go ahead and fuse those into place. Think of all of the different color combinations that you could do with this camper. Now we can add the door handle at the bottom. And then I will locate the little handle that goes on the swing door and fuse that into place. Next, we are ready to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew down all of these pieces. The flags we're gonna set aside for just a minute. Now we finally get to come to the sewing machine after all of that work. I have some blue embroidery thread in the top and in my bobbin. And the first thing I'm gonna do is stitch right in the center of my camper with a satin stitch, catching the top and the bottom all in one stitch. This will also close the raw edge of the door curtain, the top of the door and the bottom of the door as well. Now you might want to test out your stitch before you bring in your camper top. Make sure the width and the length is all set. I will sew from one end all the way down to the other, locking all of these pieces down in this stitch. And then I will move down to the tire well. I decided to use a satin stitch on this part as well. Of course, you could use any kind of decorative stitch with your machine or just a straight stitch as well. This is really where you get to uh, be creative in the different kinds of stitches that you use. going around the tire well with a satin stitch. Then I'm going to sew down the swinging door. And I do this section first because when we move on to sewing around the door, the beginning and ending of the swing door stitch will be locked in the satin stitch that we do next. You can play with all different widths and colors and really get creative with stitching all of these pieces down. Coming along the bottom. I will stop right when it gets to the edge of the door. And then we will move down to the bottom of the camper. And so directly along the edge of the bottom of the door, all the way up. We will sew right over top of that satin stitch in the middle, all the way around. And then we will sew over top of where we started and stopped with the swing door, and that will lock those stitches into place. And continue on down right over the center to the bottom edge of the pillow. 
Now I'm going to come in with a satin stitch around my windows and give those a little frame. I did make the width of my window stitching a little bit thinner. And I'll go around all of the sides of this window. And then I will do the back window. And we're going to start at the very edge of the pillow and go all the way around, stopping when we get back to the edge of the pillow. You might have to roll your pillow top up to get it all through the throat space of your machine. Just like this, going all the way around. Keeping that nice curve of the back window. And sewing all the way to the edge. I've decided to use the same blue thread to go around my tires. And so I will do a satin stitch around each one of the three tire sections. Going around just like this. All the way around those pieces. And now I'm ready to mark the lines for the rope that holds our flags. I'm just using a piece of chalk to give myself some direction. And I've swapped out the blue thread for some green. I'm going to start at this very edge of the right of the camper and just do a very thin satin stitch going over top of my chalk line. And this will look like a little rope that is hanging on the front of our camper. Make sure to lock your stitches when you come to the end. Just do some back stitching. And then when you start again at the door, make sure to lock those stitches as well. Now we'll just again follow the little chalk line. And once you have the little ropes, you're ready to bring in your flags and fuse those into place. Stop, rotate the pillow around, and finish up the rope to the end of the camper. Now I'm going to switch out this foot and we'll do some free motion work. Getting close to the end. And at this point, you don't have to worry about locking your stitches. Now, as you can see, I've added all of my flags right over top of the little rope that we sewn onto the front. And I have my free motion foot on. You, of course, could use a satin stitch to sew down your flags as well. Today I'm going to speed things up and just do a straight stitch using my free motion foot. And we're going to stitch all these little flag pieces down. When we do all of this stitching onto our pillow top, stitching down all of our applique pieces, we are also quilting our little pillow top at the same time. You of course can do any kind of additional quilting to your pillow top that you'd like to do. I'm going to keep this pillow simple and just stitch down all of the applique and that will serve as my quilting for this pillow top. So I'll just go through and stitch down all of my flags. And now all of my flags are stitched down. I've changed the color of my thread 
and I'm ready to stitch down all of my curtain pieces. Again, I'm just using my free motion foot and going around all of the edges of each one of the curtain pieces. We are starting with the door curtain, going around the edge, just like this. Feel free to rotate your pillow as you need to. And coming back up to where we started. And of course I had a little bit of a tension issue. <laughs> so I had to fix the top tension for my thread and now we can continue back up to where we started. Of course, it's best to check all of your tension before you start quilting. <laughs> now I'll just bring you along as we stitch down the rest of the curtain pieces. If you noticed my other pillow, I did do a satin stitch around each one of my curtain pieces, which looked really awesome, but it was also really time consuming. And so, uh, if you're good with free motion work, it does speed up the process and uh, you get finished much quicker. <laughs> but I really do like the look of the satin stitch around the curtains as well. We'll just finish up with this back window. Just like that. And now we can stitch down the door handles. Again, I'm just going to do some free motion work. Just like this and stitch those little tiny pieces down. And same with the little handle on the swing door. Once you have stitched down all of your applique and done any of the quilting work that you wanted to do, we're ready to complete our pillow. You can see I have the back of our pillow with the pretty side facing up. I'm going to pin our pillow top with the pretty side facing down to our back fabric. Just placing some pins around the edge to make sure everything stays in place. I am going to sew with at least a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the perimeter of our pillow top, making sure to leave an opening so that we can turn our pillow inside out. Once you've stitched all the way around at the perimeter of your pillow, we can remove the pins and now we can trim the back fabric all the way around. There's some really good chunks of fabric that I can save for future projects. And we're just going around and cleaning up all of the extra fabric. It's a really good idea to take a pair of scissors and do some snips in these tight corners around the tire well, making sure not to uh, snip into your stitching line. And then do some small snips around all of the curvy edges of your pillow. And this will just make sure that everything lays nice and flat. And once you've done that, we're ready to turn our pillow with the right side out. I always make my opening a little bit too small to fit my hand into. And I think this, for me, is the most difficult part of making this pillow. But once you start getting the majority of the pillow out, it starts to get a little bit easier. Once you have everything pulled out, you can reach your fingers back in and smooth out all of your seams, including the little tire well. And flatten everything out. Next, we're going to bring in the pressing board and give this a good press, nice and flat.
And here's our pressing board. For the opening of the pillow, I like to tuck under the raw edges. And then I'm going to go around and give all of the outside of our pillow a good press, nice and flat. And then we can stuff our pillow. Today I'm going to be using some scraps from a t-shirt quilt. <laughs> All of these extra bits of fabric do not go to waste in my studio. I love to stuff my pillows with them. I think they give my pillows a nice weight. And it keeps all of these extra bits out of the landfill. I'm going to stuff my pillow and then sew the opening closed. And then we will meet back when we are all done. Now for the opening, I like to use a ladder stitch. Whatever kind of stitch works best for you, go ahead and sew that shut. And here we are with our finished pillow. You can see how I closed the opening with a ladder stitch. And I think it turned out so cute. It's almost like a his and hers camper pillows to throw into our pop-up camper and take camping this year. I think it would really be cute on the sofa as well. This is the first one I did with the satin stitches around the curtains. And I did some additional quilting on this camper pillow as well. I've had a lot of fun sewing with you today. If you make this pillow, I would love to see your pictures. You can share with me on Etsy or on Facebook. The links will be in the description box below. I hope you have a fantastic week and we'll see you really soon.